Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with complex numbers. I know some of you will be probably disappointed like why is this problem so easy? Well, you know, we have all kinds of people on this channel and I think it's all okay to do a problem that is on the easier side because we've been doing some complicated equations and I think now is a good time to do something more manageable. Okay, so here's the complex logic. We have this equation a plus 3i, which is equal to 5 plus 14i divided by 4 plus bi. And guess what we're going to solve for? a and b values. Because those are the only unknowns. What else can you solve for, right? Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve for a and b in this equation in two different ways. Are there really two methods? Yes, and if you know of a third method, please let us know in the comment section. If you are new to complex numbers, don't worry about it because I made a bunch of lecture videos you can check out and let us know if you have any questions because asking questions is the best way to learn. Stay curious. Now, if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, then go ahead and check out CyberMath, which is another channel of mine. Actually, that's my first channel that I started a few years ago. So check it out and let me know what you think. That is cyber with an S, okay? Great, I have to say it because people think when I say cyber, they think it's with a C. By the way, I'm not from Siberia, okay? It doesn't mean cyber, Siberia, it means something else. Some of you probably know. Anyways, so how do we solve an equation like this in two different ways? Good question, right? So. The first method, hmm, let's see, which one should I present first? I think I will use the conjugacy method. So here's the first method. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the quotient because the question is, and again, this is something that I ran over in lecture videos, how do you divide complex numbers? I mean, you can divide, how do you divide integers? How do you divide 12 by four? It's three, easy, because four times three is equal to 12. Well, you can kind of do it, there's a process which is called long division, but you cannot just divide complex numbers like that, or can you? I mean, I've never seen a problem where division by complex numbers is handled like this, like four goes into five how many times? Maybe once, and then you put four plus bi, i, and then you subtract. I'm not sure if it's gonna work at all. Or maybe four goes into five, five over four times, right? And then maybe I should just multiply by five fourths, and that should give me five plus 5 over 4 bi. And then I should negate, just like long division, right? Minus, minus. And then these two would cancel out. And I should be getting something like 14 minus 5 fourths of b i. And guess what? I want this to be my remainder? I don't know. I don't really know how to proceed here. So I'm going to stop. But if there's a way to do it this way, I'll be curious to know. Let us know if you know uh, if this works. Great, now let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. What I'm gonna do is I'll take this, okay, and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Because if you multiply a complex number, again, this is something I covered in lecture videos, but if you take a plus bi and multiply it by a minus bi, which is its complex conjugate, you get a squared plus b squared, which is a real number. So that's the trick. That's the real deal. Let's go ahead and find the complex conjugate of 4 plus bi. Easy. All you have to do is negate the imaginary part. And the imaginary part is the coefficient of i. Not, it does not include i, just the coefficient. Okay? And when you multiply two complex numbers, you use the distributive property. And of course, for the denominator, you must use the formula 16 plus b squared is gonna be the denominator. For the numerator, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more work. Let's go ahead and do it here and then just plug it in there. So we're gonna multiply five plus 14i by four minus bi, let's distribute, okay? Five times four is 20. Five times minus bi is minus five bi. 14i times four is 56i with a plus sign. And minus, this is the critical part I forgot to say, sorry about that i squared is negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1, okay? The principal square root, I mean. So 
Here we get negative 14 b i squared, but i squared is negative one. So that becomes plus 14 b squared. Nice. We're gonna bring together the real parts, 20 plus 14 b squared. And this is gonna be 56 minus five b, and that'll be the imaginary part. Can I just go ahead and transfer that over here? Divided by 16 plus b squared, that would give my number in simpler form. Simpler meaning like there is no complex number in the denominator, so I can write it in standard form. Otherwise, it's just gonna be the quotient of two complex numbers, which is too complex, right? And guess what? It is equal to a plus three i. So this is equal to a plus three i. Wow, nice, right? Not so nice, but because it's the first method. Now, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and put this number in standard form. So we're gonna split it up into real part and the imaginary part. And notice that there's only one unknown on the left and one unknown on the right, which kind of makes things a little easier. And of course, don't forget the I here. Now, if two complex numbers are equal, then real, then real parts are equal. And of course, the imaginary parts have to be equal as well, right? So this whole thing is equal to A. How nice, right? <laughs> Not really, but we're gonna set it equal to that. So this thing is equal to A. Don't worry about this too much because we have another equation. Now this thing needs to equal three, which is a good thing, obviously. So let's go ahead and set that is equal as well. 56 minus five B divided by 16 plus B squared is equal to three. And this is a really good thing, you know why? Because this gives us a quadratic equation. And yay, we have a formula. Three B squared plus 48 is equal to 56 minus five B. Let's put everything on the same side, three B squared, plus 5b, 48 minus 56, that's a minus eight, and then that's equal to zero. What, one thing that makes this equation amazing is the fact that the sum of its coefficients is zero. Did you see that? Hopefully, that's the very first thing you should check with polynomial equations, no matter what their degrees are. In this case, three plus five minus eight happens to be zero, therefore b equals one is a solution. You got, you got that? Now, since b equals one is a solution, I can also find the other solution doesn't matter which method you use, Vieta's formulas, or just simple factoring. B, if B equals one is a solution, B minus one needs to be a factor. Am I speaking too fast? Maybe I should slow down a little bit because some people complain. And well, you can do 0 0.75, I guess, in that case. I don't think I speak too fast. Maybe I do. Let me know. So B minus one, and then to get the other factor, think about what you're supposed to get. Like, this is your product, right? In both senses of the word, it's a product and it's a product. So we should definitely need a three B and to get a negative eight for the constant term, we need a plus eight. But does the middle term check? Of course, that's how we were able to find B equals one. Great, so from here we get B equals one and B equals negative eight thirds. But wait a minute, this is not the end of the story because we have another equation to solve. So 20 plus from here, uh, a equals, let me copy that right here so I can just work it out, 20 plus 14b squared divided by, I forgot what it was, 16 plus b squared. Great. Now we can go ahead and plug it in. If b is 1, a is going to be 20 plus 14, which is 34, divided by 16 plus 1, which is 17, and I a is equal to 2. Uh-oh, that's super nice. Thank you. And if b is equal to negative 8 thirds, it's not that nice, we have to square it first. B squared is gonna be 64 over nine. I mean, you can plug it in and find the values. Come on, you can do that, right? That's fairly easy. I'm gonna leave that for you as an exercise. But here with these values, A equals two and B equals one, we get the solution. Well, what, what was I solving for? A and B. I was about to write this as two plus I, but we're not looking for A plus B I, we're looking for A and B. And can you please find the other values because I'm too lazy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the second method. We still have to do another method? Really? Okay, I'll do it. Don't worry. The second method is kind of cool. You know why? Because it is the second method, and there's a good reason why it is. We're going to do cross multiplication, and you should do that with most division problems. Like, why bother with conjugates, right? Just multiply and do the work. Well, is that going to give us something different? Let's find out. 
Distribute, you get 4a plus abi plus 12i minus 3b. Remember, i squared is negative 1 equals 5 plus 14i. And then from here, we get 4a minus 3b plus ab plus 12i equals 5 plus 14i. And yes, the same thing applies, but this time it's a lot easier. This is a 5, this is a 14, which means AB is equal to 2. Okay, AB is 2, 4A minus 3B is equal to 5. How do you solve it? Okay, 2N1, we already know it's going to work. Let's find the other solution because we didn't do it with the first method, right? So let's go ahead and solve it. Please use the first method to find the second set, and then you can compare our solutions, okay? Or I mean the answers. So here's what I can do. I can replace b with 2 over a, but that's going to give me a quadratic. Is there an other way to do this? Yes, I can actually go ahead and square this. Okay, that's going to be 25. And that'll give me 16a squared plus 9b squared minus 24ab equals 25. I know that ab is 2, so this will be 48. Oh, things are not going to look that good though. Anyways, let's do it. And this one, what was I thinking? I was thinking about, oh, okay, here's what I was thinking about. Uh, I would square this as well. Okay, here's the thought. 16a squared. I don't really need, you know what? Okay, this is good. 48 plus 25 is going to be 73. So this will be 73. Let me just keep that for now. And then I'll square this. And this is going to become the same thing with a plus sign. We already know AB is 2, so this is 48. And we also know that this is 73. Their sum is 121. Yay! 121 meaning this is plus minus 11. So now we can do the following. 4A minus 3B is 5. We already know that because we squared it. But 4A plus 3B can be 11. Or 4A plus 3B can be negative 11. You see, this is a lot easier than solving a quadratic, even though it looks or feels a little longer. Here we get 8A equals 16, which is A equals 2. We already found that. Let's do this one. 8A is equal to negative 6. A is equal to negative 3 fourths. And to find B, you can subtract this way. That'll be negative 16 equals 6B. And B would be negative 8 thirds. So it wasn't super bad. And that would be the second pair of solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Remember to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.